This is Beyond with Heather Tesh, where we examine near-death experiences and life itself, hopefully making this life a little better. My guest today is David Ditchfield. David was in a terrible accident. He was pulled under a moving train, and because of that, he had a near-death experience. If you haven't heard part one yet, go ahead and click on that link. That'll take you there. Otherwise, here's part two. Do you think the entire accident was a divine plan? That's interesting, yeah. Um, you could say that. You could you could say that it was because because my, my whole life it was going so terribly wrong that I felt like that it happened to to give me the whole the accident was, was meant to take me forward and had the near-death experience it's, it's interesting because when i was going to the spiritualist church you know i go to quite a few of their church meetings and at the end of each one they'd have a, a traveling medium from all over the country you know just a guest who would do what they call a platform for half an hour and i was getting picked out quite a few times you know but i guess it's because i was still as i said earlier my energy was still a, aligned to that other realm you know and they were picking up on that so yeah so um so it just shows that there, there was something bigger happening than, than just me you know a guy on uh getting his coat trapped and going under you know i mean the the, the british braille police said it they, they spent a whole year doing their inquiries and uh they said we're finished now i said great and i said um look good to meet you guys you know thanks for all the hard work you did i'm sorry you had to do so much and then they said no and they, the guy said, look, we don't get it, though. We, we all put all our, all our figures together. You should be dead. We, you, should, you should not have survived this. And I said, well, I know why, but I didn't go into it with them. <laughs> you know, right. I, I thought they weren't going to get it. You know, I left it at that. Do you think the divine beings that you met are still watching over you right now? Oh, yes, most certainly. I mean, I, I know that those beings have been not only there from that moment in time on, they were there before in my life, but I just couldn't, I wasn't aware and I wasn't connecting with them because my life was just, all the problems that happened, I just dealt with them. I, I call it, my my life was linear before then, you know what I mean? And every time something happened, uh, I, I didn't really deal with it, you know, whereas now I know that I, I can call upon my guides. We've all got them. It wasn't just me who got them, you know, we've all got our, our own angels, our own, guardian angels and and spirit guides watching over us so they're definitely there yeah and how easy is it to reach out to them oh it's it's so easy um the reason i say that is because a lot of us go through life thinking like especially with prayer that 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 we have to be really i don't know it's it's, it, we should, we can't ask for things because it's just a lot. That's the way a lot of faith is, you know. That that, that you, you you feel kind of guilt and 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 and, and shame. Uh, whereas I don't think you should. I think if you need help, if in, it, don't feel afraid just to ask. Say I need your help now. It, it's all about me, I know, but please, can you come to me? You know, and you can connect with them. And uh, I find that I can connect with them through. I go to spiritual healing still. Uh, you know, not really because I need the, the, so much of the physical healing, but I go there just to connect with those guides. When I go into that space, it's such a beautiful, peaceful space. So if you can find anything like that that is peaceful, whether it's spiritual healing, Reiki healing, or Shiatsu, or even just pure meditation, you, that's when you can you can connect with your guides because it's just getting away from the busyness of the world, basically, to be able to connect with them. I'm also curious about the flames you saw around the light. Why do you think there were flames? I don't know, actually. I mean, it's it's it, it's just um, it's just the way it appeared to me was that, that, that those flames were very much part of of that tunnel of white light. I guess I guess it was it, it was almost like a sort of a, a ring of protection around the light because the light itself was just about purity and love. You know, who were you before this accident? And how have you changed since then? Well, um, I've I would say that I've always been a sensitive soul, so that's not changed. But uh, I covered that up a lot before. You know, I was I, I was living in London, as I say, and and I was surrounded by a lot of people that I knew who were successful. You know, a lot of people working in the media, the music industry, and stuff like that. And I thought I just want to be part of that life. You know, I, and I, the only way I could I could pick up 
work was by manual laboring and and i was no good at that either you know i looked at these guys on the building sites and i thought well, the, wow they're really creative the way they can just plaster a wall just like that and of course i would just mess it all up so i always felt like i never fitted in anywhere so yes yeah, so I, I tried to cover that up by acting really i would say you know I was, so i was never really true to myself never at all you know and and i was always blaming myself as well and as i said to you earlier i was always looking at the, at the past and worried about all the mistakes I'd made and then worrying about my future, where it was all going to go, where it was all going to end up and never really living in the present moment. And that's what I, I learned from that other realm was that the most important thing to do is to, whenever you're going through any trauma in your life is to try and be present, try and ground yourself and, and, and live in, be aware that the present moment is the most important one. And I've heard you say how important it is to be authentic and that really caught my attention because I just had my previous guest, Vinnie Tolman. That was the number one thing that he had learned yeah. when he was on the other side was to be authentic. Yeah, exactly. That's it. This is this is what I'm. Authenticity is, is where it's all coming from. You know, where which, as I say before, I was acting, which meant I wasn't being authentic. Whereas now, you know, there's no. Uh, I hope there's no there's no form of acting coming from me. You know, in my life, and uh, and it's. It's it's also it's self love you know and 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 because I was receiving in that realm of and when they were healing me and taking all those layers off me that I felt self love for the first time in my life and it was great and when I came back uh, that self love continued to put energy through me you know and once I found that self love I felt self worth that's why I was able to to start doing all these paintings and start writing music you know and and so it's something that, that was lacking. So once you become authentic and, and you find that self-worth, that self-love, then you, you'll, you'll find that doors will open for you. And the doors that open are the ones that are, are the ones that are meant for you. And I'm not saying that we're all going to be musicians or artists. That, that was, just, that was obviously hidden deep inside of me. You, you could find that, you know, you, it's, you know, people do have awakening without having ND, NDEs. Some some people have spiritual awakenings. You know, you, you I read about people now. You know, you know guys who worked on the stock market or whatever. You know, working in the city of London or New York on, on Wall Street suddenly say, "I've had enough." You know, and then they just uh, they just pack in their job, sell up, and move out. And they say, "I've become a cheese farmer or whatever." And this is what I was meant to be doing. I'm so happy. And I think that's it. That's what it's all about: finding what is true to you and what really belongs to you. How do you think the world would change if? everybody had a near-death experience or some sort of an experience like you did uh well at the moment uh, I, I feel that that would it would be great you know because in a sense we did that when we had when the pandemic happened uh and we had the first lockdowns here in the uk it was amazing because I was seeing on social media people talking about it, saying, hey, I'm out with my family. We're walking out in nature and we're looking, oh, we can hear all these different bird sounds. Does anybody know what this bird is? And, and everyone was appreciating nature. And then they're turning around saying, hey, I just started baking my own bread for the first time in my life. I'm teaching my own kids. It's great. So I thought this is brilliant. The pandemic has actually given the whole world a chance to become conscious and uh, and and." and but it didn't last. Everyone started then saying, "No, we want to get back to normal." And I thought, "No, there is no normal. This is this is the new normal, and and go with this because this is this is like consciousness awakening here, you know." But uh, yeah, but most certainly the world needs it now. You know, it's uh, it's uh, for for many reasons, for lots of reasons. I would agree too. With there was obviously so much tragedy with the pandemic, but it really did bring out some good things, I think, is we all kind of had to refocus our attention on what was important and how we lived our lives. Yeah, it did, didn't it? It was just amazing, you know. It's just, uh, you know, I remember queuing up at supermarkets when they had the social distancing and, and you'd be stood in a long queue, you know, so many metres apart from the next person. And I was amazed at how, how, much, how calm everybody was about that. You know, people weren't getting sort of impatient. People would let other people into the queue. I thought this is wonderful, you know. Yes. Yeah. Like so many others who have had near-death experiences, yours was very unique. Do you think it was designed specifically for you? Um, how do you mean? Why would you say that? Because you, for example, you were laying on the slab. Yeah. 
which I've never heard anybody have before. Okay. I've just, that sort of thing. I just, I find it interesting how different each one is. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know what you're saying because I, obviously I've looked into near death experiences since, you know, and, uh, Excuse that sound. I've got I've got pigeons on my roof. Oh, <laughs> They're all joining sweet. in. <laughs> Love it. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I've, I've obviously since I've had my near death experience. I, I mean, I've, I've I've spoken on on various online NDE summits and stuff like that that are based out in the in the US. So I've met other people who have had them, and I've got to know them. And I realise that each one is different. And uh, it's very true. I, I realise that that I learned everything I needed to learn from my experience and to bring back with me. And, and I, I, uh, I will say that when I first came back into my body, the first thing I said to myself was, why have they sent me back? What is my, you know, what, what is my, my reason for being sent back? What am I supposed to do? You know, and I knew I've got something good to do. I knew how I got to give, but I didn't know in what sense, you know, and obviously I found out as time went on that, uh, it was through creation, through uh, my art and my music. But other people have found other gifts that they've come back with, you know, and uh, and so forth. But most people do come back with a strong urge to to, to try and share their experience with the world and and try to sort of give. You know, there's an awful lot of giving sort of sensation inside you. You've got to you've got to do that. You know, not got to, but you want to. It's an urge. Yeah. Well, in many ways, people would look at your life and see what you're doing now and say you're living your dream life. Do you think that God wants us to be successful and live out your dreams? Or is it more important that we just sort of sit back and let things unfold? Well, I firmly believe now. I mean, if I look back on my life before, then I was constantly trying to push doors open, as I said earlier, and they weren't letting me in and nothing was working for me. Whereas now I just kind of like, allow things to come to me so it is i do believe that if we stop and have patience and don't you know that the, these things will come to us you know that it, it's it's like being in a, in a car at a traffic light you know for example you know in the in, say you, you're late for a meeting and then the the, the light turns red and you get that sensation of oh no the light's red you know and i'm, I'm really late i can't spare another second you know and and you the, the temptation is to jump the lights uh, but if you, but also if you, you could jump those lights and then have a crash, and that means that you're going to be very late for that that meeting. So it's all about that. It's all about saying, don't, don't worry about it. You know, it just I mean, I do that now with the traffic light. When I when I hit a red light, I just sim simply sit there and think that's okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to be late, but it's only a few more seconds. Why don't I just go with it and and then I can pull off and then. But just try to do that with your life, basically. Yeah, try just to sort of stop and. And, 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 you know, God, God wants us all to succeed. The, the universe wants us all to succeed. It wants us to create and keep recreating. But, you know, success is, you know, human nature. We've got, we've got to the stage now where success is, is viewed in terms of, you know, how much money you're making and things like that. But that's not really what I, I feel success is about now for me. Anyhow, it used to be, I started worrying about that. I was, you know, I wanted to, win the lottery and get lots and lots of money and stuff to but to change my life but it doesn't it's it's success is 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 all about uh you know sort of having a spiritual awakening just just awakening yourself to, to to what's around you you know aligning yourself with the with the energies of, of the universe and nature that's all around you that's what i feel success is once you find that you just feel great you know and if we try to aim toward that, our, our spiritual healing, and also letting things unfold. Do you think it's still okay to ask the universe for things and for God for things, but still kind of be open-minded about what happens? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying you shouldn't be ambitious. I'm not sh saying you should not make money. It's fine, you know. I mean, I've, I'm still surrounded by people I know in my life who, who make a lot of money, and I think that's great because – uh, they're they're also happy in their work you know in their line of work so that's fine that's great you know um but we have to get away from this illusion that 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 success is just about that you know that's, you know that's all you know and um i mean i found that i've i've i found that um you know there are times that i can 
I can I can create something. Well, everything I create, like I'm working on a new piece of music now, and and I don't know where it's going to go. But I'm not. Th- I never think to myself, right. I want to make this really commercial. I want to make this so that it gets used for a, a movie soundtrack, or uh, it's going to make me a lot of money. I just I just let create it and then let the universe decide where it's going to take it from there. You know, and uh, and interestingly enough that's that's what's happening you know i've been contacted by the bbc again uh, but this is the bbc world service and um they're gonna make a a, a 30 minute documentary on me uh, in a series of documentaries but the, the, there'll be a 30 minute one uh, which will be about my experience my near this experience but they also want to come and record the orchestra performing you know a short part from the new symphony so i didn't plan for that and i wasn't aiming for that you know i just kept creating and that door opened for me uh, on its own accords uh, via somebody else uh, who's an amazing uh, philosopher. Um, he's a, a, um, a guy called Steve Taylor, and, and he's a professor at, at Leeds University. And he interviewed me for his book, uh, which is called Extraordinary Awakenings. And and, uh, and from that, uh, that's they wanted to make a series involving him. So that's where I came into the equation. So I didn't even ask for it or put myself out there for it. So so it is all about that. Let it let it let it allow it to come to you. It almost seems like we need to get our priorities straight, and when we're really doing things from our heart, and not always looking at the what we can get from it. That's when things can start to unfold. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. Yeah. It, it is, that's where it is. And also the things that unfold are the things that are meant for you, you know. Right. The things that the energy that you're meant to be aligned with, uh, uh, you know, rather than something that's, that might not be right for you. That's why going back to the lottery s- scenario, you, you often find, especially, I don't know about in the US, but in the UK, so many people who win vast amounts of money on the lottery, you know, you they love reporting later, you know, just how tragic their lives have turned out and it's made their lives worse and again, I'm not saying you shouldn't have money in your life, but uh, what I'm saying is obviously they, they they weren't aligned to the energy that was suddenly, it, it, it must be incredible. Yeah, it, If you suddenly won the lottery, you, you're, you're suddenly on this energy that's going like a speeding train and uh, but and you're on it and it's just like, wow, you know, where is this taking me and, and stuff and there's, there's no getting off, you know, so yeah. I totally agree. I won't say that I've never bought a lottery ticket because I do occasionally, especially when there's a big, yeah, Money yeah, me too. yeah no, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say this. I often say, boy, that's going to ruin their life because it really would just distance you from so many things to just have your life change that quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. You know, but, um, you know, again, it's like a lot of um, famous musicians, especially pop musicians, you know, so many, so many, we lose them very young to, to right. drugs and alcohol because they're not ready to be aligned with that energy that you know that they've come from you know basically having nothing in their lives to everything and not just money but you know as soon as they open their front door you know the cameras are flashing and their whole life just becomes like a well you know it's it's a uh, they often you often hear them saying it's like being on a roundabout that you can't get off so it's kind of like you've got to be but but there again, it's not like that for everyone. You know, you, you also right. you see p- people who are successful in music, for example, and they manage to align themselves with, with that energy, and and they manage to go with it, and they and and uh, and f- for some reason they 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 know how to ground themselves. David, I'm going to toss out a few words. I've got a list here, and okay. just just give me your thoughts on each one of these. Mm. So the first one is gratitude. Mm. Gratitude, right? So, yeah, um, gratitude. Yeah, I, I mean, I, for me, gratitude is all about being grateful to to uh, to my guides and and also to 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 God, you know, and the universe. Uh, but I, that gratitude, I always give out if things happen. Say, for example, I'm working on a piece of music, or and and 
that I find that it's suddenly coming alive. It's like, wow, or I'm working on a painting, like like I talked about the recent one of the crucifixion, that that's ha happening. I suddenly go, thank you so much. My gratitude is there every single time I send it out. But, you know, but there's a fine line with gratitude, I think, because I, I, we have to be careful of going back to that th feeling of guilt and shame again and feeling like gratitude. And, oh, I'm so, thank you so much, almost like it's got to come from a place that's wholeheartedly, wow, I'm embracing this. Thank you so much. Rather than you know feeling small and and and, and being grateful f for the wrong reasons, where you, it's guilt and shame that's making you feel grateful. If that makes sense. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. How about this connecting with nature? Connecting with nature. Oh yes, I like that. <laughs> I talk a, a lot about that at the moment. Yeah, because I've been doing an awful lot of connecting with nature. I, I've moved recently, and I've moved very close to nature. And, and believe you me, the energy of nature is just so incredible. It's so it's so powerful that it's uh, it's, it's hard to describe. Uh, I, I guess it's, it's again it's because it's taking me further away from the the unconscious world, you know, from our society that's going. Uh, in, uh, uh, at a crazy pace at the moment and it's lovely just to connect with the energy and realize that that is the most purest energy there is you know the whole of the animal kingdom birds insects the whole whole lot they're still aligned with the universe and we've forgotten how to do that as as a human race you know because the egoic mind has just kind of completely taken over so yeah connecting with nature i think it's something that we all need to do you know i, I know that I, I had a lot of uh, therapy after my accident because i had to and uh and a lot of therapists would say to me look you know if you're going through a moment of depression because i did i got uh, post-traumatic stress and uh, and they'd say go and go for a walk go in a field and they'd all say that they'd all tell me to connect with nature so that the, the, there must be some truth in there how about meditation meditation yeah another great one yeah i meditate a lot it's uh meditation is great and a lot of people sort of worry that they can't meditate they say oh, i can't meditate because i i don't and i think it's because there's an illusion that meditation is going to take you into this incredible world where you where you leave you know your body and, and stuff but it's not what you do in a sense but it's 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 allowing yourself to go with it it's allowing yourself to switch off from the busyness of the world just if you can just do it a lot of people say oh, i haven't got time to meditate but everyone's got time to meditate you know you can always find 10 minutes in a day it, that's all you need you know and I, I tend to give myself half an hour at least to meditate and uh, yeah it really helps me it's, it's it's i find that it's a it's um it's, it's it gets the busyness of the world out of my system because it's hard to avoid it you know you, i get up in the morning like all of us and and you know we'll switch on the tv or switch on the news and you know i like to see what's going on in the world but i, I try to take it in in small doses because there's, there's a lot of hysteria in the way it's delivered that actually leads into one of my next ones which is ah. <laughs> news media and technology right okay um yeah so going back to that uh, i'll elaborate that then um it, because the news, especially at the moment, I, I, I'd say the way the pandemic was being dealt with and the way that all all the troubles and the, the, the tensions that are happening in the world at the moment, uh, it's all dealt with. It's all coming from it, – it all goes back to the early days of newspapers. You know, when, when, when news was sold by, via newspapers before we had technology and, and, and the internet and stuff like that, you know, they, they, they would print – dramatic headlines on, on the on the front cover saying, you know, Titanic sins, you know, thousands of lives lost on the Titanic. You know, you, you see it now, you know, in the film and stuff like that. And that's the way they grabbed your attention. It was like, oh, my God, this is horrific, so let's buy it. And it's continued on now. You know, it's on social media. It's on the news. When the news comes on, they, they get these dramatic headlines saying, you know, this has happened and that's happened. And I think, hang on, take some responsibility here. You know, you're, you're making – you're putting fear into people. Yeah, okay, you're keeping people to watch your channel, but don't do it like this, you know. So so be aware of that, that there is a certain amount of drama that's been fed to you in, in the way that the news is delivered. So I, my advice is what I do, and that is, yes, I watch the news. It's good to know what's happening in the world. Don't avoid it, but just do, take it in small doses because – it will just repeat itself throughout the whole of the day. It's like a, a dog chewing on a bone. They stay on the same story and rotate it. So step back from it as much as you can. That's good advice. How about the purpose of life? The purpose of life, right. Well, it's going back to what I said earlier, that I, I realized that when I was 
a part of the universe that I, I realized that we're, we are all of us part of this universe. And we've, as I said earlier, again, we've forgotten that, you know, we've forgotten that because we're, we're not aligned with it. And so the, the purpose of life is, is, is that the, the universe wants us to recreate again, going back to nature. When I look outside my window and see the seasons change, that's the universe making that happen. That's making, you know, chicks hatch from eggs, the um, plants bloom. You know, that's the universe making all that there. They want to give. They, they don't want to take away from us in the universe. And so the, there is a purpose in life, and that purpose is to is to um, is to align yourself with the universe and and to create and uh, try and step back from the busyness of it all. So my next word is signs. And basically I'm talking about, does the universe give us signs? The universe most certainly gives us signs. And going back to meditation, if you meditate, then, then you, then you, you, you'll hear those signs. I, you know, I have signs that come through to me in meditation through spiritual healing. And it's just allowing, it's not, it's, it's not like a spoken sentence you know that you see in the movies with a big echoey voice that tells you what you need to be doing or where you're going in your life it's 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 almost like a sort of like it's it's like a feeling that it's it, it's like um i'm i don't know how to describe this it's 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 like you just know when when you're when you're you're doing something that is meant to be that something is right it's because you're aligning yourself with an energy that that's taking you forward um it, i mean people get signs i mean i as i say i'm not clairvoyant so i don't get signs you know but people talk about things like you know i do believe in things like you know like things like this a white feather just falling and, and stuff like that that I've had that happen in my life where I'll be going through a lot of stress and panic. Then I'll find a white feather suddenly landed on my kitchen floor. And I just go, wow, that's great. You know, that's like a sign that's telling me, stop, David, everything's going to be fine. And it, things will work themselves out because things do find a way of working themselves out. Kind of like the white dove that showed up when the orchestra was going to play. Exactly. Yeah. That was a sign. You see, that was just a, it was just, it's just a symbol. It's just, and, uh, it's not saying that that white dove or that white feathers come from heaven because no, I don't think that's the case. I think that they are physical things that are on the, on the earth's plane, but it's just that they're, they're, they're almost like sense as a little sign or as a little signal, you know, you know, it's like, I mean, for music as well, just things like that. I just like, I remember my, my mother passed uh, uh, just before the pandemic. And I remember when she passed, I remember, the hospital phone in the morning she'd gone into hospital she'd had a, a minor heart attack and so we were able to go in there and spend time with her and tell her how much we loved her and then and really that was our, our goodbyes because i got a phone call the next morning and the hospital said look you got to come in your mom's had a massive heart attack and i said okay i'm on my way so i went to collect my sister and it's interesting i remember getting in the car and i switched on the the, the, the car stereo as i put on the the, the key in and uh, this beautiful piece of music came on uh which is one of my favorite pieces of classical music by marla's and it's called marla's fifth symphony and the only reason i knew, know it because it was in a film that i heard in, in a soundtrack it's really beautiful and it came on and f from as as i was pulling off and it calmed me and i thought I knew that my mum had passed and I knew that that music just, you know, had just come on just to calm me down and help me do the 20 minute drive, collect my sister, take her in. I knew she'd be really upset and it did. So things like that, watch out for things like that because they really are signs, you know, they're sent there to help us, to guide us. They're like signposts to help us through. That was a signpost for me. That was a piece of music that was signposting me, helping me to feel you know, strong and grounded to be able to deal with what I was what I was about to face, you know, which was the passing of my mother. Yeah. You know. David, you wrote a beautifully well written book. Thank you. Um, called Shine On. Where can people get that book? Well, basically, I'd, I'd go to Amazon, you know, because it's on Amazon through, on all over the world. So wherever you are in the US, the UK, Europe, you know, it's uh, it's it's selling all over. Yeah. So yeah. You can go to Amazon, just click on Shine On, David Ditchfield, and it'll come up. And if people want to take a look at your paintings, where can they go to take a look at them? Well, uh, one of my paintings, if, you, if you're in the U.S., uh, one of my paintings is in the, the Museum of the Bible at Washington, D.C., on loan at the moment. So that's going to be there uh, for the rest of this year. 
um, and which is great, you know, because, you know, the museum of the Bible, you know, I, I found when I spoke to Christians at first, I spoke to a few priests and vicars and about my experience. And I thought, no, they're not really, it doesn't, it kind of jars with their faith, you know, and their teaching. So I was really pleased that they, they approached me and said, well, we're doing a, 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 an exhibition now. Um, and it's, it's about science and, and the universe. And, um, we want to deal with, the afterlife and so we wanted to use your painting that's a fantastic but other than that if you want to look uh online the best thing is to go to my website or follow follow me on on instagram social media to see my paintings and my website is it's called shine on the story.com so if you go there you'll find a lot of my paintings on there and you'll find links to my social media then if you want to click on because if you if you're following me especially on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see all the new work that's coming up because I've got a whole new body of work that I've been working on that I'm excited to share with people uh, later this year. Wonderful. And I will make sure to also include those links in the description. So Thank for those you. of you listening, you can find them there. David, you also have a YouTube channel as well, correct? Yeah, I do. Yeah, there's a YouTube channel. Yeah. So this, this, and, yes. what's, and what is that called? It's folks? called, it's, it's David Ditchfield NDE. And, and that's my YouTube channel. So, so you find that and that should click in. You know what I mean? I mean, I think if you Google me in anyhow, you know, when you go into Google search, you, you normally see quite a, a few links for me on there. If, or, the, or as I say, the web, website's got the links. But, yeah, so do try. Please come and join me. And, you know, you know I, I, I like putting up videos which are talking about some of the subjects, some of the questions that you asked me of, actually, that you picked out, the random words. I've been talking about that, about connecting with nature and, and all those different things. And so, yeah, so you can listen to some of those YouTubes. Please do. Wonderful. Get a lot more information. David, do you have any words of wisdom or parting words that you can give people that are listening? Yeah, um, what I'd say is I learned, obviously, a, a very important thing, and that is not to fear death. Because we don't talk about death at all. We don't even approach the subject, which is, which is now to me seems really bizarre because we plan for everything else in life, whether, you know, whether it's the birth of a child or, or marriage or even taking our car test, whereas we don't plan for death. And I think that it's good to try and at least – you know, embrace it and, and, and think about it and question it rather than just try to ignore it. Because I think once you do start to acknowledge, from, well, from my point of view, that there's no fear of death, that, that there is an afterlife and this, this is only one part of our journey, I think once you start to realize that, it can help you to sort of deal with an awful lot of other things, issues in your life. Because I do believe that, that this the fear of death is buried deep within us because we're not discussing it. And that doesn't help us with with our, our anxiety issues in life because we feel we've got to cram so much into our lives because we think if so many people say to me, I've got to do all these things because, you know, I'm going to be dead soon and things like that. And I think, no, you know, that's not the way to view life. You know, it's just uh, get over this thing that death is the end and that's it. The light switches off and it's all over. So, yeah, I think once you get over that, then 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 you can start to embrace uh the real you the authentic you yeah as as we both you use that word and so do i you know and uh and once you find that true or authentic you uh i think life will start to become a lot more peaceful and uh, a lot less of a chase and a lot more enjoyable well it has been so enjoyable speaking to you david i can't tell you how much i've just loved our conversation today oh. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've enjoyed it totally with you as well. So thanks a lot yeah, for having me on. You are so welcome, David, and best wishes to you. And to you. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me on Beyond with Heather Tesh. Please add comments and questions you'd like future guests to answer. Also, if you liked what you heard, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. That'll help keep this podcast going. You can also go to Beyond with Heather Tesh to look for more episodes.